Welcome back to the second part of the Branded Content Mentorship Series. In the previous video we had a quick introduction to some of the functionality of Resolve and this time we're going to check how to set up a project, analyzing the data we're going to work with and going a bit deeper into the column page. Make sure to download the Vinci Resolve first in the link below and to download the training folder before you continue. Alright, let's open up Resolve and get started. First thing we do when opening up a new project is going into the media page. This will give you access to your local or external disk where you've put the training folder. If it's not showing up, click on the left media storage bar and right click to add a location. In the folder you will find different types of footage divided by camera names like Arri, Red and Sony. This will let you know which color transformation you need to use later in the process. But let's check out the clips in the Sony folder first. When selecting a clip our metadata will appear on the right side of our screen. This metadata is important for us to know as we need to set up a project frame rate before importing any clips to your media pool. If we import the clips to our media pool before setting the correct project frame rate, Resolve will automatically lock these settings, which we cannot directly adjust later. From this metadata we can get a lot of information like resolution, format and codec, but also the frame rate which we need to know to set up our project. As you already can see for these specific clips our frame rates are all 25 fps as we are based in Europe. If you are using your own clips and are based in the US, these frame rates would probably be 23.97, 24 or 30 fps. So now that we know our frame rate, let's open up our project settings first. In the first tab, under our master settings, we can choose our project resolution, frame rate and set up the format for our proxies or render cache. Let's select 25 frames per second under our timeline format and click save. Let's create a bin under the master media pool, call this footage and import all the footage in that folder. If a notification pops up, make sure to click don't change as we already have set up our project frame rates ourselves. If we do click change and have mixed frame rates in a local storage, your project can be set up incorrectly. After importing successfully, let's go to the edit page. Select all footage from your media pool, right click and select create new timeline using selected clips. This will automatically create a new timeline for us and we can continue to the color page. In the color page we directly see our viewer in the center, our clips from the timeline below the viewer and our tools and scopes at the bottom. But let's start with a quick overview of the primary color wheels. From left to right we'll see the lift, gamma, gain and offset. The sliders will let us control the exposure levels of our image as you can see in the scopes. The lift will let us pull down or up the darkest part of our image, the gamma the mids, the gain the brightest part and the offset the general exposure. We normally use these sliders to balance the exposure values after we've done a color management, which I will explain later. We can also set these exposure levels using the custom curves to be a bit more precise, but in general the primary wheels were perfect for global exposure adjustments. As we take a quick look at our scopes on the right side, we'll see the little drop down box where we can select different scopes. For example the waveform, vector scope or histogram. Like I said in the previous video, the RGB parade and waveform will show us the exposure levels from our selected clips and the vector scope will display our hue and saturation levels. When you click on the setting icon you can adjust the brightness, display quality and some other options for all the different scopes. But let's click on the icon with the three dots and select the function display qualifier focus. If this one is activated our scopes will indicate the specific value when hovering on the image. So this way we know where our highlights and shadows are based. We can also analyze images, for example movie references, which we save to go for a particular look. Let's see how that works. So when we right click in the gallery and select import, go to the downloaded training folder and select the stills in the folder references. When it's imported click on the first top icon called image wipe above the viewer. This will split up your screen where you can wipe directly into the viewer to compare the footage with the reference. You already can see that this will affect your scopes as well. This way you can level your footage with your reference image and go for a similar look and feel. A different way to compare our references is by selecting the split screen option to see both images next to each other. By using the split screen option you can also compare different clips in a timeline which we've already created. Let's select the previous clip by holding shift, go to the drop down menu and click on selected clips. Next to our viewer we see our node graph. 
Notes are comparable with layers as we know them from other design programs. Normally we can only stack layers, but in this case notes are even more advanced because we can connect them throughout our note tree and even divide notes by using a parallel note for example. We can give the notes names by right clicking on it, change label and let's call this one exposure. At this point there is no shortcut key to access this functionality, but we can set it up ourselves to speed up our workflow. Click on DaVinci Resolve on the top left, keyboard customization and search for label selected note. Click on the keystroke and enter a key which you prefer. I'm using the tab button so I can quickly rename a note by pressing tab. Ok, let's get back to our color wheels. On the top we'll see our main sliders like temperature, tint, contrast, the pivot point for the contrast and our midtone detail slider. By using the temperature and tint slider we easily can adjust the white balance which we'll find out later. Next to our color wheel tab, we'll see the HDR tool. These color wheels have a different functionality than the primary wheels, as you have way more control over exposure, hue or saturation. But don't get confused by the name, as it doesn't magically transform our project to HDR. The labels above the wheel indicates the preset up zones defined by Resolve. If we adjust the highlight wheel for example, we see it will let us adjust the brightest area in our image. Resolve will think for itself as we didn't specify which area are the highlights. But the advantage of the HDR controls are that we can set up a specific zone for each color wheel. By using the expander view we can select the range for each wheel by moving the slider. The histogram on the background will give us a better understanding where the exposure levels are based in our footage. For now just keep in mind that the primary wheels are perfect for global adjustments and the HDR wheels will have way more control over specific regions in your footage. Ok, if we go to the curve tab it will probably look familiar, as most photo or video edit software has these built in. In short we can also adjust the exposure levels here by setting custom curve points. You've probably already noticed that we can use multiple tools to create the same effect. For instance pulling the blacks down in the curve will give us the same look as pulling the lift down in our primaries. So next to the curve tab we'll see the color warper, which is the tool I probably use the most when creating or correcting. This tool allows us to change precise hue, saturation or luminance corrections in our footage. I also use this for rebalancing certain colors. Next to the color warper tab we'll see the qualifier tool. This tool lets us isolate specific areas by simply dragging the qualify tool onto the image. But make sure to activate highlight mode to see what you've been selected. Moving on to the power windows. We can use this for instance in combination with the qualify tool or the color warper. As we can draw a mask or select a preset into our image. If we do adjustments in the same node as where we've added the power window, it will only affect everything what is in that mask. We can also use this for relighting a scene, emphasizing a talent, objects or other important parts in the shot. In the tracker tool on the next step, we can track the power window from the previous step throughout the whole shot automatically or do adjustments in the tracking per frame. When we've done and created all shots from our timeline, we can check all of our shots together by clicking on the lightbox button on the right top. This gives us a quick overview of all shots and also let us use the same functionalities as in the timeline of the color page, like adding shots to a custom group or copy grades from one clip to another. This was a quick overview of the graphic user interface and resolve with the most used tools. In the upcoming video we're going to finish up our note tree, learn more about color management and finally start with some corrections.